Hi folks, we are expanding. I wanna show you guys our new building. I wanna show you guys some of the improvements that we made. I talk about some of the business aspects of buying this building and just give you guys a general tour. Pre-COVID, we had, I don't know, four years worth of classes um, focused around Fusion 360, mostly uh, three axis milling. We had one five axis class, which we're actually hoping to bring back and we had to shut those classes down with COVID, and now we've got the chance to have a dedicated facility that is just gonna be awesome. I, I want it to be a world-class facility with the right machines, the right resources, so that folks can come here and spend time actually learning and running machines. So this is the building, and it was being sold by the folks that built it about 30 years ago and used it for their general contracting and home building business. So this room right here was, from a machinist standpoint, an absolute mess. So. Uh, as soon as we were able to close on the building, my wife and son and Jane and I, and actually kind of on a sad note, this was sort of Judd's last days were spent here helping us get this shop ready, which is really wonderful because it's the start of that new journey. We started taking off some of the framing and stuff that they had on the walls and benches that were built in and, and we've got to patch and paint that little area there. Dust extraction system that was running throughout the shop, it was just 30 years of dust and grime. It was going to be very difficult to clean. We ripped it all out and it was totally the right decision. I was then able to clean the two heaters. Again, the top of them had just this thick caked up bit of sawdust on them. And so it was actually super satisfying uh, to clean them like that. The floors had stain and paint on them. And I tried some of the um, stuff that you can buy from the hardware store that could kind of do a light cleaning or etch on them and it didn't touch them. And so I realized, okay, got to get quotes on epoxy coating the floors. And that was probably the hardest financial decision to make because it was about $5 a square foot, which is more than we paid for our shop next door, but that was, geez, six years ago. What I knew was that if we didn't do the floors now, it would be really difficult to ever do them, period. It was still a difficult check to write, but they look absolutely spectacular. You know, my wife and I and kids had done a lot of the demo, but then we found a painter who was able to come in, do all the patching and painting, and honestly, that made a world of difference. The ceiling and the walls now looking like they're clean is really cool. Uh, I'm debating of adding some more machining-related posters, or I've got a friend who's an artist, and she does these really cool wall murals, and I'm thinking we're gonna do a wall mural that kind of shows something about the history of machining or maybe a, some version of our story, uh, but I really want that sort of inspirational thing around it. And we had to rip this door frame open. We wanted to be able to get a vehicle through there and move sort of larger VMCs in and out of there. Being in a climate controlled shop for worker comfort, for student comfort, for the quality of the machines, uh, it's just imperative. So we actually ended up uh, adding the kind of largest size mini split that I believe is available and they've been able to keep the shop plenty cool and it feels pretty refreshing and we've had some hot summer days. So as soon as we had the building under contract, we had a contractor pour this pad section right here. Nice, easy way of getting equipment, pallets and stuff over there, which was great. That worked and then we found out we had another problem, which is that this ramp that's been here for decades, um, it was about an inch short of the gap of the actual floor that you can see that was epoxy coated. And I um, bought a rubber strip thing to see if that would work. Works terribly. It might work okay for, I don't know, a dolly, but it doesn't work for pallet jacks or forklifts. And so I actually had remembered somebody had mentioned having a concrete slab hydraulically lifted. It was $1,150. They came in, they took a look at it, they gave me the quote. And then the day they came here, they drilled holes that you can't really see them. And they have a remote control button that pumps the slurry in, in this pad. It just lifted right up. I mean, this was incredible. They had total control over how high they lifted it, the angle of it. So now we've got an almost perfectly flush bridge joint, which has worked out great. We had to do all this because I got a quote to pave this whole lot, and that quote was a total non-starter. I about fell out of my chair. Uh, I was uh, ready for it to be expensive, and it was double what I thought was expensive. Now, in fairness, I got that quote around February of this year, 2022, which is right when things in the world got weird with Ukraine and oil prices and so forth. So I'll probably try to get a quote again if things kind of quiet down here. Um, but I'd like to really like to have it paved or concreted, but not at that price. I actually wasn't sure we were going to do the sign right away, but it makes me really proud to see that sign there uh, and for folks that are coming here to take a class. So on that note, let's go into the training classroom. This isn't necessarily the final layout, but 
This was their sort of lobby for the, in the showroom for the cabinets that the contractor sold. The blue paint color was still there, the wainscoting was still there, and the track lighting was here. So we ordered some of these prints off of iCanvas that I think look absolutely great. Um, got our Uline desks set up. We got all new laptops for our training classes. And we added some acoustic tiles for sound dampening. We got our TV here, uh, training class TV here at the center. Two weeks ago, we actually had our first class and Adam Booth was able to come up for that. I've gotten to know Adam over the years. He's been up for some of our old open houses and he's starting his CNC journey and had asked me, hey, whenever you start classes again, uh, I wanna be there. And so he came up, started to learn Fusion, started to get some time on. He was running the Haas here, but I think he'll have a Miltronics and a Flex CNC at his shop. Uh, and that's what it's all about. Like this, the reason we do classes is because 12 years ago, when I was in my New York City apartment, I wanted this. I wanted the chance to go somewhere, actually learn, actually make parts, uh, run the code that I was programming on my laptop, not just hit cycle start on some trade show type demo. This little space here was their reception lobby area. My thought is to use it for some of our hobby machines. The countertops look like they're wood, but they're actually a cast concrete. Um, and so for now we'll use them, I think for the machines, just for like proven cut and our own video stuff. But my goal starting kind of as soon as we can next year probably will be to start adding more classes. Um, right now we have the three axis milling class. I'd like to add a fusion only class. I'd like to add a hobby machine class. I'd love to add some sort of a kid's class that could be 3D printing or basic type stuff or demo style thing. Uh, turning and five axis, those are the big ones. If we walk out this way, we're into the training shop and classroom. Vince is down there getting things set up. Uh, we have one Haas over here now. We've got the 1100MX, 770M, 1100M, and our old original New York 1100S3. This will probably end up getting phased out or replaced with a new one. Um, but that gives us generally a two student or at most three student per machine. Uh, you can do three on the Haas for sure. And we're trying to add a UMC 500 right now so that we can start doing the, the uh, five axis classes. And then this is basically a mirrored half to the building. We did not epoxy coat those floors and we didn't do that for two reasons. Number one, those floors are just plain concrete. They were never um, messed up with stain and paint. So they look fine. And second was just money. The one thing that we did here, we added a two post car lift. Uh, my son and I did a project over the winter on a Porsche 944, kind of a junker that didn't run and kind of got the car bug bit by it. And so having a space for a two post lift is frankly phenomenal. Our employees can use it for their cars. And we've got some things in the works that are car related as a potential spinoff from Saunders Machine Works, but more of that on, on another day. For those of you that have really followed the channel, <laughs> this is my first uh, released shop. So when I moved from New York back to Ohio, I went onto the family farm and um, was there for two years probably. And then um, it was time to move. We talked about it on the, actually on the Judd video. So go watch that video if you want to hear more of the backstory. But, and I knew the a gentleman that owned this building and knew that they had this space kind of vacant, not super actively used. And so he rented just this area right here. Uh, this, we had just removed this wall uh, just the other day. But, this little shop here. So some of our old videos, uh, in fact, our first training class, we managed to cram into here. So it's kind of a cool little circle, full circle to be back and have access to this shop. Uh, and then there's one last space up in here. Yeah, so this was an old office area for when they had the uh, building subdivided with separate tenants. Um, so I started to rip out the wallpaper in this office and get this area cleaned up. I'd love to switch the flooring out, but kind of a low hanging or low priority right now compared to um, focusing on the training half side. We put in an offer about a year ago, uh, the seller didn't uh, agree to that. And so we just kind of let it sit there. Well, fast forward to around uh, Christmas of 21. So about six, eight months, eight months ago or so, I started to realize two things. Number one, that we could potentially get training classes started again, uh, which we definitely had a demand for. And, and I got me really excited. And the second thing was uh, the key thing. I reached the point where I knew I was gonna be upset if somebody else bought the building. I've always kind of thought it was funny that when most people, uh, if they purchase a single family home or a home to live in, it's probably one of the largest financial decisions that you're ever gonna make in your life. And it's totally at the whim of where you happen to be looking and when you happen to be looking and who happens to have something for sale. Kind of crazy, right? Well, same thing here, you know, we didn't have a choice. Um, I reached that point where I didn't want someone to buy it and I realized it's my time to buy it or, or else. So third thing actually, frankly, is more of a personal opinion. Um, but I'm guessing some of you that are watching will agree, which is that I'm pretty scared of inflation. So I thought, look, if I'm scared of inflation, one of the best things that you can do is 
being involved in a hard asset like real estate. I mean, everybody out there knows two by fours are going up, plywood's going up, um, the cost of the construction is going up. Long term, that will drive the value of real estate. It may not in the short term, but certainly it will in the long term. So for all those reasons, I, I sort of said, okay, it's time to go. And Grimsville and I have talked about a lot about this on the business of machine. As he's starting to think about, you know, what are his choices on, on his building and leasing and owning and so forth. And look, I, I wouldn't say I exactly planned this, but one of the reasons when my wife and I were leaving New York and we were looking for places to go was I wanted a place that was uh, reasonable cost of living, pro-business and had the opportunity to do stuff. Um, and you know, the fact that we were able to afford our shop, which would be, I mean, it is a fraction of the price that what it would have been in the urban area, like the greater New York City area, even the suburbs of New York City. It's, I think, an untold part of a manufacturing or entrepreneurial story, which is balancing the availability of stuff like that. So I'm really glad that this all came together. Ooh, I'll show you one last thing. We, we threw some pallets in here, but this, here, this is the drying room and this was a paint room. Um, we need to do some TLC in here as well. But I actually think that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna be using it for painting per se or just yet, but um, I left this section up as walls because whether we do start painting or powder coating, that may relate to the car thing I alluded to earlier, or um, if we wanted to move a tool room or grinding or abrasive type stuff in there, I thought that could be great. So. Um, for those of you that are interested in our hands-on training classes, we have, uh, I'll put a card in the description in, in, the, in the video. Uh, we have a sign-up list because so far they've been selling out. Uh, we're also looking to add some of those more classes next year. Uh, otherwise, folks, thank you. This is, uh, this is kind of the next stage of our journey, and I'm proud to be here, uh, and I'm proud to share it with you guys, and thank you for following. Take care. See you soon.